our third uh, presenter for Food Talk uh, this afternoon. That's Colleen Matz. Colleen is a farmed institution specialist at the Center for Regional Food Systems and also the Michigan core partner for the National Farm to School Network. Welcome, Colleen. All right, so I'm going to talk with you today about leadership, which may not be what you expected to hear today. Leadership is not itself a new big idea, even in food systems. I myself was lucky enough to participate in the MSU Great Lakes Leadership Academies Emerging Leaders Program a handful of years ago. And our cohort learned new skills and ideas that made us better at our jobs, but also made us better at life. We learned some fairly tangible topics like tools for facilitation, balancing content process and relationship in meetings, how to lead from where we sit, including what we called sneaky peat approaches to helping to lead a conversation as a participant, not as the organizer. But we also learned about ourselves. We learned about our communication styles, including how we communicate under stress, our family rules, and most importantly, about our emotional maturity, which isn't often a topic of discussion in professional development spaces. This experience left me with a network of people who have a shared language from the shared experience, which is kind of like summer camp. I also gained a better understanding of myself with less judgment and greater confidence in my professional skills, including how to navigate crucial conversations. So I don't take it lightly to say that that experience did change my life and it proved invaluable as I stepped into the role of co-coordinating the Michigan Farm to Institution Network, as I dealt with family loss and grief, and as I started to balance work with pursuing a culinary arts degree. And it continues to be invaluable to this day. So you can see how leadership development is personally very important to me and why I believe in it. But as I said, that itself, leadership development, is not the big idea here today. The big idea is the who could benefit from a new kind of leadership institute. So let's talk about food service directors at schools and the school food structures that they operate within. And to grossly overgeneralize, but to speak from my experience working with school food service directors through Farm to School here in Michigan for over a decade, school food service directors are good people with the tireless energy to serve in a mostly thankless job in which they truly believe in the purpose and in their place in it, feeding kids good food. They may or may not arrive to that position having the wide range of skills that are required to do their jobs well. And school food service directors really are like superheroes. They're expected to be masters at managing tight budgets, skilled supervisors of their food service staff, nutrition experts to hit those federal targets on a weekly basis, prudent procurement officers and ACE marketers to promote their programs, <coughs> including through social media, and they have to cook good food. They have to figure out how to fix broken kitchen equipment, deal with food orders that may not arrive on time, and substitute for staff who call in sick. They have to report to principals and superintendents and school boards. They have to manage tough parents. They have to train staff, some who are willing and some not so much, and they have to motivate kids to choose and eat the foods that are served. So that's a tall order to expect anyone really to be well prepared for that position from the start. Some food service directors have backgrounds in business. Some have backgrounds in nutrition and food science. Some, a small but seemingly growing proportion are trained chefs when they arrive to the job. And some may rise up the ranks within the school food service department in their school district. School food service directors work under very tight limits. So let's go through some of those numbers here. They're expected to get kids, sometimes hundreds of them, through a lunch line with time to eat in lunch periods of about 20 minutes. Under the new federal nutrition standards, they're expected to offer daily one half cup servings of fruits and vegetables with every school breakfast or lunch, including a balance of dark greens and or red and orange vegetables and legumes that they have to balance over a week. They're expected, including my parents, to charge no more than about 250, according to the School Nutrition Association, for every school lunch. They get reimbursed at most $3.23 from the federal government. And about a dollar of that is meant to go to the cost of food for a school meal. And that includes about 20 to 30 cents for the fruit and vegetable portion. 
So that's why commodity foods, which are now called USDA foods, are not just important, but essential to managing budgets. Other program costs are intended to be covered by other monies coming in, and those include labor and benefits, supplies, and even indirect costs like utilities and custodial services that get paid directly to the school district. So on top of all of that, um, with all of those limitations, they're still expected to at least balance their budgets, if not make money, so that they can reinvest into the program with capital improvements, things like new equipment for the kitchen or the cafeteria. And on top of all of that, many of them are still willing and able to find ways to purchase and serve more local foods as part of farm to school programs. Some long-term champions have been growing farm to school programs for over a decade here in Michigan, and they're still coming up with really creative and resourceful ways to source, serve, and promote those local foods to kids while reinvesting those school food dollars in their communities. All of this structure is in place to serve good food to kids. And sometimes school food is the only food that vulnerable children get to eat all day. In Michigan, in fiscal year 2016, school food service directors served over 65 million breakfasts, 130 million lunches, nearly 3 million after school snacks, to the 1.5 million kids enrolled in K-12 through schools in the state. And I should mention, of course, their staff are supporting them to do this. So with knowing all of that, I hope that you agree that our school food service directors do important work. It's really important. So thankfully, the School Nutrition Association of Michigan offers professional development training for school food service directors and their staff. In fact, now it's a requirement for staff to get professional development and training opportunities. In um, Michigan, they offer courses that span the range of skills that they're expected to have, which can include things like sanitation and food safety, dealing with conflict in the workplace, developing a marketing plan, and introduction to financial management. A new addition to their training on culinary techniques is called Michigan Farm Fresh Skills, and that's a farm to school culinary training that some colleagues from MSU Extension developed as part of the Michigan Farm Institution Network. But what's next for longtime food service directors who have managed to succeed in building that skill base? And what's next for those who are long-term practitioners of farm to school? How can they be best supported beyond just the professional development and skills required for that job, but in their own leadership development? An opportunity that we're exploring through focus groups this winter is a farm to school leadership institute. And I say we because it's an idea that many of us involved in the Michigan Farm to Institution Network have been percolating on for years. And we hope that someday it could expand to food service professionals from all institution types. Luckily for us, the USDA agreed that this was an idea worth exploring. And they funded our colleagues at the Michigan Department of Education to proceed with this project in partnership with the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development and some of us staff at the Michigan Farmed Institution Network, including myself. My colleague, Diane Golzinski, from the Office of School Support Services at the Michigan Department of Education, wisely said that leadership is a skill that requires training and practice and that community members consider schools to be already hubs of local food systems activity. I often refer to them, along with other institutions that have food service programs, as good food access points. Therefore, our school food service directors are already looked to as food systems leaders, whether or not they're farm to school practitioners and whether or not they've stepped into that role. So through our focus group work, we're seeking to gather evidence, including the need for developing this type of leadership institute to help these champions gain skills, training, and practice to better serve as the community food systems leaders that they already are. We will certainly use the focus group results to direct the curriculum development for the institute, but it could include topics like components of local and regional food systems, such as local meat, food hubs, season extension, and seasonality, racial equity in the food system, succession planning, approaches to partnership, how to network, prioritize, find resources, and supervise to grow farm to school programs, and making the case for farm to school to kids, administration, and the school community. If it proves worthwhile, we hope to execute this vision to cultivate a strong cohort of school food service director leaders who are farm to school practitioners 
with the preparation and confidence to step into their role as community food system leaders. They could be networked together to support and learn from each other and practice leadership so that they can develop their own shared language through the shared experience. They could engage in school district and community projects to distribute those skills and knowledge and better maintain and sustain farm to school programs across the state. And in the long term, they could mentor and coach each other, including those of the next generation who are developing as farm to school leaders and champions. Our long term goals are to amplify the impact and sustainability of farm to school programs and contribute to more to the development of more school food service directors as community leaders involved in the Michigan Good Food Movement. And it's my personal long term hope that having a leadership institute like this will help the role of school food service director rise to the rank of superhero, as is indicated in this sweet letter here. And I hope it will become something that's more compelling for young people who want to do good for young professionals and can add a little light to this typically thankless job. Thank you. We have one question here. We may have a second one if you repeat it. Sure. Okay, help us understand the connection between the next farm bill and making sure kids at school have healthy food. Boy, um, when is the next farm bill going to happen is the ultimate next question, year. right? Okay. For, for Well, we'll see about that. Um, I think there, there are a number of programs within the farm bill that are supporting farm to school and we saw a real change in the environment and messaging coming from the USDA through the Obama administration to support farm to school through things like the USDA farm to school grant program and through the establishment of a farm to school team at the USDA that already has changed its name to community food system. So I think the big message at this time is to um, keep that funding. I believe that the National Farm to School <laughs> Network is asking for an increase in that funding because the demand is still very, very high. So they've got the numbers to support um, an increase should the um, legislature be amenable to that. But uh, proof will be in the pudding there. All right. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you.